I'm out here at the ham side booth here at Orlando Hamcation, and today we're talking with Gary McKinnon from HamSci about the upcoming solar eclipse and the effects that it may have on the amateur radio bands and what they are doing as a group to study the potential effects from the solar eclipse today on KF5 IRE Ham Radio. We're with HAMSI, the Ham Radio Science Citizen Investigation Group. HAMSI is a collective of professional researchers and amateur radio operators. We're an entire group who enjoys studying space physics, how the ionosphere works, how the Earth's magnetosphere and the ionosphere react with the sun. So in, in studying the eclipse uh, is, is one of our main focuses for the year because the ionosphere changes during the day as the sun goes up and goes down on a 24-hour basis. But in the eclipse, the same kind of thing happens, similar to gray line propagation, but it happens over like a five to 10 minute period. So to us, that's kind of a controlled experiment that we can, uh, we can kind of sink our teeth into, extract data based on amateur radio contacts, and later go back and study how the eclipse, uh, how the ionosphere reacted. So what kind of data are y'all trying to, to gather here? For us, it's basically amateur radio QSOs. People that are on CW, if they call CQ, their calls get picked up by CW skimmers and stored in the database. If they're on FT8 or another digital mode, same kind of thing. If they're sending their data off the PSK reporter, literally by the end of the eclipse day, we'll have millions of records of who is transmitting, who is receiving, where they're located, what time, and on what band. The ionosphere, we know quite a bit about the ionosphere. It's been 100 years since we figured out that the ionosphere is responsible for long distance communication. But even today, there's a lot of users of the HF spectrum, other than amateur radio operators. There's the military, the GPS satellites, their signals go through the ionosphere. So it helps all those users to understand better how it works. And long term, we'd like to be able to make better propagation forecasts. Uh, today, you can go to a website, get a propagation forecast that may be about a 50% chance of it coming true. And by analyzing this data and improving the mathematical models behind the forecast, maybe someday we'll be as good as the weatherman in making predictions. HAMSI has a lot of different projects, not just centered on the eclipse. We've got some things called grape receivers where people can monitor the ionosphere from their homes. They can look at plots of Doppler shift, look at plots of signal strength, and those are going to be valuable for all of 2024 and in the years in the future. So how can people get involved with y'all's event during the solar eclipse? It's very easy to find uh, information on all our projects, hamsci.org, H-A-M-S-C-I.org. Our homepage has links to all of our projects. Thank you.